Everybody, we are back. It is Saved on Last Favorite Podcast, Favorite Channel, Favorite Everything. We are back. You guys already know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit the like button if you like it. Hit the dislike button if you don't like it. Leave a comment if you like it. Leave a comment if you don't like it. Also, follow us on Twitter at the Mark John NFL for me, at mholder95 for Matt, and of course, pandasubs.com. Discount code 35% off for using the discount code TDL. So get 35% off there at pandasubs.com. All right, Matt. Um, so we got our uh, general manager here uh, hired. We do. Um, they just had their press conference today. Um, Tom Telesco is the shocking news. Everybody thought it would be like Ed Dodds or Champ Kelly. But uh, it's Tom Telesco is the uh, new GM. And then, uh, you know, some more freaking out with Jim Harbaugh being hired to the Chargers. So um, it was a dev- dev- definitely an eventful day. It yeah. Like. yeah eventful week at least or i guess really since friday since ap was named like we finally got the ball rolling a little bit got the the two big pieces of the offseason puzzle um in place now now it's time to fill out the rest you know it's like when you get the corner pieces on the puzzle like the corners yeah. are all in now you just gotta fill in everything else <laughs> fill in everything else right all right so uh with tom Telesco, um i think that was a very disappointing hire for most raiders fans um, a little bit for me too, a little bit of disappointing. I, I, you know, when you start to look at it though, you kind of could see why uh, Mark Davis went that route, mostly because of his tenure. I guess he, you know, he's a veteran GM and he won a rookie GM with a rookie head coach. So uh, Telesco, who drafts really well in the first round, but definitely is not the best drafter after the first, second round. Um, we'll go over his draft in a minute, in a second, but uh, your thoughts on the initial, initial hire of Tom Telesco. Yeah, I mean, I think I was like a lot of people were like, you get that like knee jerk reaction of like they just hired the Chargers GM who got fired after the Raiders hung sixty three points on him, where you kind of like get a little bit of that bad taste in your mouth. Um, so it wasn't exactly stoked when it first happened, but I think like you said, the more I thought about it, like the more it like made sense, and the more I think the better it looked. Like he has hit on the first round, has had a few uh, big free agent signings in the past um, when he can spend money for a, for an owner that's typically no- or notoriously cheap. So I think that'll help him out, and I think, like you said, uh, pretty I think pretty much Sean confirmed it. This the I don't know if it was today, but he like wrote a story about um, where he basically said like Ed Dodds and Kelly were the favorites, but like uh, like Deshaun's story from at the beginning of the offseason, um, Mark Davis didn't want to didn't want to have uh, you know two rookies in place at those prominent positions and. Um, that's, I think, why you saw Telesco get the the late second interview uh, on Monday, and then quickly turn quick turnaround on uh, Tuesday to to hire him. So, like you said, I think the experience helps. I think it's be interesting, and uh, I mean, one of those things. Like, I think you you give him a shot, like you give him an opportunity to work with a few more resources and what he's done in the past, hitting in the first round. Uh, I think it could be a good pairing. You know, Raiders have had their have that their fair share of misses in the first round rec- and. Uh, last few years and it's not just one regime as Tyree Wilson it wasn't exactly lightened up this year either so who knows maybe that's exactly what they need they can combine uh get the best of both worlds hit the late round gems and the first round hits yeah so um you know with Telesco I mean that's the big thing is the you know the first round and second round not building a lot of depth which I think goes into like scouting a little bit and having a, a scouting department that's not the best in the world so I think, you know, having Champ Kelly, who's, who is rumored to be staying, um, even though he kind of today, they kind of really, you know, he was in, at the press conference. So since he was at the press conference, yeah. so is Patrick Graham. So that kind of means he was staying. And then they hired two new secondary coaches to kind of fit how Patrick Graham wants to do things. So that kind of means he's staying a little bit too. So I think the scouting apartment with Champ Kelly, I think hopefully they can make up for that him not adding the depth and not having being able to grab those late round picks. Um, Cause obviously Tom Telesco likes first and second round guys. He's definitely studies that film, loves that yeah. film, does a good job of finding those guys. <laughs> it's just after that, which, you know, it's hard for me to start arguing with people over fourth and seventh round picks. I just, it's hard for me to do that, but Hey, a lot yeah. of people think those, uh, that's how you build a football team. But um, I, I think if you go and find some, some good free agents and you draft really well in the first or second round, you should be able to yeah, build the teams going forward. But, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what they do. You know, his comments today at the press conference, a little weird, you know, some people thought that I was overreacting to 
him not knowing anything about Aiden O'Connell. <laughs> so I was like, how did you get the job then? I thought you were like, at least have a night. <laughs> like, like a, you'd be able to tell me something. He's like, well, I, I haven't watched him really. And uh, I know he put a lot of points on us, but uh, and then AP says some pretty nice things about him. But like, it was just, I don't know. I, I, that kind of, I thought that was weird, but people said I was overreacting, I guess. An yeah. Conference, but, you know. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of see where you're coming from. Where like, I don't think it's the great example to be like, yeah, I, I didn't do any like research. Like, I would think that would be one of the first things you kind of start to look at is the quarterback situation if you're interviewing for the job and making a strong statement. But, um, I mean, at the end of the day, like, he does have plenty of time. You probably watched Maiden O'Connell film after that press conference a little He's bit. Probably watching uh, it right now, right? Probably, yeah, probably cutting it up right now. So, like, I'm not like gonna freak out about it, but it is interesting. Like, like you said, where like. Yeah, what do you mean you you didn't watch the the quarterback of the most important position of the team you were were hiring? It's, it's more to me like how did you get the job then? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not about like him trying. You know, some people trying to say he's doing smoke screens. I was like, I don't know. I, it was more to me was like then how did you get the job then? If you did, like, what, what was your sell? <laughs> I mean, the smoke screen would be like, "Oh yeah, we think Aiden O'Connell." You know what I mean? Be like, "Aiden O'Connell's our guy." Like, you know, like to just praise the guy that's in the building, right? Yeah. Not that's to be like, no, I haven't. No, I haven't watched him. <laughs> that is a it is an interesting comment. You know. All right, man. I feel better about it, man. That you, you, yeah. you thought that was because I just thought that was weird, man. It just uh, yeah, because 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 uh, my example, I answered somebody was like, "What?" The, remember when the uh, Josh Rosen? Yeah. Right. Kyler Murray. <laughs> like the, Josh Rosen. <laughs> Go ahead. They made like the they had the social media team do a graphic. They got on Photoshop and all that. You, they spent some time to make sure that both <laughs> Kingsbury's words that are uh, was it Kingsbury or was it Kime that said? Uh, uh, I think it was Kime. I don't know. Yeah, it was, uh, was it Kime? Yeah, was it Kime? And I think Kingsbury said it too. But yeah, they took some. Uh, they put effort into saying into proving that Josh Rosen was their guy just to draft somebody else two months later. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what he says. I, would, I just wanted him to come like with an analysis of him. Like, yeah, he's a you know he's a tough guy. Definitely, uh, you know, somebody that we you know we watched about film. You know, so this like instead of like you know I don't know, man. You know, I'll get yeah. to it after this. After this, I was like, how did you get the job? Like, what were you? What did you tell Mark? That was maybe he was a uh, maybe he was like Raider fans and surprised he got the end of getting the job. He didn't think he was a serious candidate until Monday. I don't know, maybe. He thought he was just like, you know, it's probably just, you know, they probably just bringing me in for no reason. Yeah. And then they're like, you know what, Tom, <laughs> we want to hire you. He's like, oh, man, I got to evaluate this team now. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anyways, uh, let's get to this draft, man. Let's get to this draft stuff. Enough of uh, Mr. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so we'll start off with uh, 2016 here. Um, but we got, we're off to a good start here. We got Joey Bosa and Hunter Henry. Now, I know a lot of people talk about like second contracts. Did Hunter Henry get a second contract with them? I don't think so. No, he, he they weren't going to pay him. He got more money with the Patriots. Okay. So he was worth a second contract, put it that way. Yeah. Exactly. Another team, you know what I mean? It wasn't like he was a bad player by any means. He just, that's probably partially spun. I was not wanting to open up the checkbook. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That I mean that that would have a, a little bit of an issue with that because I mean <laughs> they need a tight end right now. I think mean, that's kind of funny. All right, but um, Hunter Henry, uh, we're gonna get into how he's terrible at drafting interior offensive linemen. There's gonna be a pattern here, guys. So this is Max Turek, who played a year in the NFL. Play, look even further. He played one game. <laughs> Great. Pick. He, I will All say right, I, uh, when I did some research on him, he like had knee problems and it was partially injury. But yeah, he was uh, in the league in 2016 and out by 2017. <laughs> not not exactly a ringing endorsement for uh, Telesco there. <laughs> but the first two guys, good picks. I like those. Uh, Jatavius Brown, you know, there's any of these guys. I mean, a punter. Uh, that's a bad a punter. Taking a punter at him lasted two years is bad. I'm sorry. Yeah, that must be a terrible bad. punter. <laughs> All right, uh, Mike Williams, the um, second contract guy. I, I, I still think that you know they shouldn't uh, gave Mike Williams money because he couldn't catch Herbert passes, but that's just my personal opinion on that one. But uh, he still made it. Forrest Lamp, we got we keep the bad drafting of interior office linemen going. Dan Feeney, who's still in the NFL, is Dan there Feeney's as a well. Starter this year for the Bears, so yeah, okay. yeah, and he is a free agent, so. That, I mean, it could be something there. Rayshon Jenkins, Desmond King, 
he's still in the league, playing pretty good for the Texans over there. So Desmond uh-huh. King is a, a pretty good find for Telesco too, because not only like he ended up becoming an all pro, but he's a safety, as you can see on the, the sheet there. He's a safety in college and made the switch to made the switch to slot corner in the NFL. So that speaks, I think, well to Telesco. The fact that him and his staff were able to project him to a different position and obviously had has had a pretty good career doing it so far. Yeah. All right. So 2018. We got Derwin James, which I, I this is my favorite pick at Telesco because it's just the most common sense pick. Like Derwin James falls to the 17. It doesn't matter. You drafted Ray Sean Jenkins at safety the year before. Who cares? It's Derwin James. So you take him, and uh, you know, he's got the one all pro year, three Pro Bowls, uh, you know, dealt with some injuries for a little bit, but he's he's been a pretty damn good player. He didn't have a good year this year. Um, but he's one of those players that could bounce back. Right, especially yeah. with Harba bringing Jesse Minter, I'm sure Jesse Minter gets some good, uh, get a lot out of him out of there. Um, and then you got Nuosu, who they didn't want to pay, right? Well, that and they paid Clil Mack, but Nuosu is a damn good player. Yeah, he's a pretty damn good player. Justin Jones, he's still in the league, but I don't know who where yeah, he's playing he's for. Also with the Bears, ironically, but he's kind of like a okay. I mean, he's still a starter in the league, but that's not exactly like. Like that might be Telesco's best pick as a defensive tackle, and it's not exactly a, again, not a ringing endorsement. He's, yeah, the interior guys. I don't know. He, he struggles with them. Good tackles, good, but bad guards and the, uh, and centers. good ends and and yeah, bad centers, um, and then bad defensive tackles and good edges. <laughs> All right. Okay. That doesn't make any sense, but we'll we'll, we'll keep going here. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, it works. <laughs> Whatever works. All right, uh, Jerry Tillery. Um, I mean, it's not a great pick. I mean, he's on the Raiders you, now. And go ahead. Do you think Jerry Tillery gets cut now? <laughs> like Telesco cut Tillery before his like rookie contract is over in mid season. Like you know, so you know what he thinks of him. I mean, like Jerry Tillery has been better with the Raiders than he was with the Chargers, but he's still like a rotational guy that's pr- replaceable. And yeah. his like contract, like he doesn't have a whole lot of dead money. Like they would save like good chunk of change like three million i think if they cut him so i don't know tillery might be uh updating his resume <laughs> as we speak <laughs> tillery's worried right now he's super worried to be honest <laughs> yeah. all right it's here hourly uh he's out of the league already i think he had uh, some injuries yeah or, uh, injury. deal with. trey pipkins solid right tackle for him for a while yeah no not a world beater but for a third round guy he's been a starter for them for the last few years and been a good player not not anything special but good yeah, and then Drew Tranco. I mean, he's playing for the Chiefs now, but he was uh, pretty decent. Another guy that, <laughs> that didn't get a second contract, but has been good elsewhere. <laughs> hey, you know. And then Easton Stick. I mean, he, it's a good backup he picked. You know, he's got a backup. I don't know if he's good, but I mean. He is a backup. He is a backup. <laughs> he, 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 he's still on the team. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's been on the team for a while. I'm, I'm sure he's been cut like three times. You feel like he's a practice squad guy. He's been cut like five times and then keeps, keeps around on the practice squad. He's one of those guys. All right, so we got uh, 2020, Justin Herbert, of course. Kenneth Murray, you know. Yeah, the trading back to get Kenneth Murray, that's that's a tough look. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, you need trading up. You need to trade it up to get Kenneth Murray. Well, they traded back into the first round, my bad. Like, because yeah. they had Herbert with the number six and then came back into the first. I mean, that, that's a huge jump to back in the first year. They're just picking, like, sixth. I mean, so they're what, they went from, like, 36 up to, like, 23 to get Kenneth Murray. And didn't have a second or third, or I imagine get, ended up giving up one of those picks, but it didn't have like a, a second or a third, or no, like basically mortgaged it all on Murray to get rid of their top 100, their last top 100 pick. Yeah, I don't know. Tough one. one. Tough one. Uh, Joshua Kelly, I mean, he's a serviceable running back. I mean, fourth round is a little bit high for a serviceable running back, but it is what it is. I, I, I feel like he's, he doesn't have a good track record there either. Yeah. Um, uh, so Gilman, certain position. Go ahead. I was gonna say Gilman's been a, a good player for him for a while. He's a free agent too. He's he's been a good start in free safety for him. Solid player, yeah. six round pick. Yeah. Um. So he could pick safeties, and uh, uh <laughs> safeties is the best, and tackles and defensive yeah. ends. We got we got we got a we got a little bit of a um, pattern here. So and then Rashawn Slater, another tackle. Santi Samuel, another DB, a corner, so it's not bad. Uh, Josh Palmer's not bad at all. Um, 
What team is Trey McKitty on? Is he still on that team? He's still on the Chargers, I think, but he's he was way overdrafted. Like he should have been like a fifth, sixth round pick, and they took him way too high, and he hasn't panned out. Who's same with Chris, same with Chris Rump because that's Chris Rump's like two hundred ten pounds, so he's the same way every day. <laughs> that's right, <laughs> two ten on the edge. <laughs> two ten. I mean, he, he could bend, but I mean, he's, he's it's because he's two ten. I mean, that's why he's got that bend like that. Um. And then, uh, yeah, so Nick Neiman, I mean, he's still in the league, but I don't know what team he's on. Is he still on the team too, Nick Neiman? Uh, he was on the Chiefs last year. I don't know where he is this year. Yeah, okay. Uh, All right, and then we got uh, Zion Johnson, who's been a disappointment. I really like Zion coming out, though, uh, but he's been disappointing his uh, last two seasons. Yeah. Um, they, like That looked like a great pick that day, but right now. I mean, he, he's just a little chance he can get better, though, because I think some linemen, they – some take longer than others. So uh, yeah. there's still a chance you can get better there. Uh, JT Woods, the, 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 I always thought that pick was funny. I don't know why they took him that high. Isaiah Spiller, I wanted Isaiah Spiller over Zamir White, but Zamir White looks better now, so I look stupid, but that's fine. We like that. And then, you know, Jamari Slater, I, I don't even know who the defense tackle is. Who's that, who's that defense? Who's that guy? Is this? Who is it? Uh, Otito Ogbogna. Yeah. Ogbogna. Uh, he's, he's a really backup guy. He's like, okay. He's a decent pick when they made it, but um, I mean, not anything special in the NFL. Yeah, um, and you know, there's other guys. I don't think they're in the league anymore. Xander, is he? He's out. He's out the league already. All right. Um, there's Quentin Jefferson, Tuli, Quentin Johnston. I mean, I said Jefferson, Johnston, Tuli, and uh, Dayon Henley, who's very happy that Jim Harbaugh's coming, and uh, uh, Darius Davis, Jordan McFadden. Yeah, so I don't know about all these guys. And then Max Duggan, yeah. who's not, not in the league. Nobody even picked up Max Duggan. So. <laughs> I think the Chargers ended up picking him up. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, when after Herbert went down. I think he might have been on their practice squad. And when, so when Stick, I think he got promoted when uh, Herbert went down to back up Stick. Uh, okay, okay. But, I mean, again, a seventh-round pick. Like, we're not tripping over that. I'm not tripping over that. So, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a little up and down. But it's not the, you know, the greatest thing in the world. But uh, – I, I think there's the high level picks there. There's still some good picks up high that, I mean, if we can get the scouting department and, you know, maybe there's, I don't know who's the assistant GM over there. Obviously those guys, those guys aren't getting jobs. So, um, I mean, let's keep it real. So, so if, you know, they put the scouting department together, maybe they can, you know, do something with it, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this goes, to be honest. Gotcha. For sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other thoughts on Tom Telesco before we uh, move on here? I mean, not more than what's already been said. I mean, that's like we said, the uh, the first round hits are the thing I think you want to drive home. Um, again, I think the Raiders they can keep up their success with uh, finding guys in the the on day three that end up being out pan, panning out. Like it could be a perfect combination. So, be interesting. I, it is worrisome. He hasn't been great at drafting the the Raiders' needs, but I mean. Got Herbert also was a big part of uh also was in the Colts staff when they drafted Andrew Luck, so has a good hit rate with quarterbacks, which uh obviously the Raiders might be in the market for this offseason. So which might have been his sell too, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So all right, guys. So uh today we are doing free agents as well. I mean, I totally forgot to talk about that before all this <laughs> news. Uh and of course we are doing some uh free agents. So we do uh Kevin Dotson, I'm going to do T. Higgins, and then um, Matt's going to be doing Legarius Sneed and Jalen Johnson. All right, so let's uh, let's get into that. Let's do that. All right, so uh, we're, first we're starting off with uh, Kevin Dotson here. So my dude right here at 69. Now, Dotson is just a, a – this year he was a dominant run blocker, and I think that's what he would bring to the Raiders. And, you know, if they, either scheme they want to run, I mean, he's more of a power guy, but they did do so a little bit of zone. So, you know, definitely a good mixture here from Sean McVay. You see right here on this first rep right here. Just the push that he gets on this dual run. He just knocks that dude over. He's just a monster. Him and Havenstein just did work on this side. Just watch one over time. Dual run. Big time run right there. All right, next one. Here we get a little split outside zone. See right here, it would get, you know. So, I mean, you see it, see the little bit of 
lack of athleticism though a little bit, but he's still he's able to get that block and help that make that a bigger run than it is, even getting up to that second level. Here's one right here against the Ravens. See that movement he gets right there. It's a great block. This this do again, eh? Yeah. 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 Moved them real easy. So, <clears throat> I mean, duo is something the Raiders did pretty often this past year. So, uh, I know we're getting a new OC, and, you know, I just, I'm definitely just guessing here. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, we, we def this is definitely a player that you could, even if you feel like the NFL is going, it's going to more power. So, I think this is somebody that you can really bring in, and he can help you out day one. So, you see here on this block right here. That movement he gets on Michael Pierce. Let's watch one more time here. Stud run defender too. Yeah. Good movement there. I mean, I said he can he can he can run block. That's all that's what I know. He, it's the Raiders need run blocking. And you know, it, it got a little bit better at the end of the year, but <clears throat> Definitely was not consistent. You see somebody like him who's consistent. He just just mauls people, just pushes them over all the time. Pushes that guy over. All right. Seeing some more duo here. Just power. Yeah, football here, guys. All right, here you go. Another one. 369 right there. You see here, <clears throat> now that's what I'm talking about, the wide zone being a little different for him and uh, his lateral movement there. So he's not able to get his, you know, reach block. They like to get their head, like, right in the middle of their chest, you know, the helmet. Yeah. And you can tell he's totally off there. And just look at his foot's first step. goes, like, inside himself, inside his base, instead of the bucket step that drops back, like, false steps. Mm -hmm. So it's just not natural for him to, to move laterally like that. Um, it's just something that he had to deal with. <clears throat> but if, you know, the Raiders, whoever their OC is, I mean, that's going to decide how they, you know, what kind of run blocking they do. But if there's somebody like Dotson, he just, he's a little bit scheme dependent. He is. He's a little bit more of a, a gap power guy. Um, but that's something if they, which, you know, bringing in Tom Telesco kind of tells me they're going to move on from Josh Jacobs because he didn't pay Eckler. But, um, I mean, that might be Spanos, too, but uh, we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> but, you know, they did run a lot more power with Samir White in there. So here we go in pass protection. So he's always clean, pad level really good, hands where they need to be. And, of course, there's a time from Stafford, sidearm. I think it's just no look, too. No look in it. I think he is. Oh, no, not no look. Look, look last one. second. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. But... <clears throat> You see how he's clean. He's clean here, but we'll, I'll show you a little later that you know he's definitely against better pass rushers when he when he faces uh, Matabuke, right? Is that what I said? Matabuke, I think. Matabuke. Okay, I think. Number, I could yeah. be wrong. <laughs> Ninety-two on the Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> so so watch it, watch it here against ninety-two on the Ravens. Which I, I swear he was thicker in college. Is he lean out? Matt BK? Yeah. Uh, maybe a little bit. I don't think he's ever a big dude. He's always kind of a quicker guy. Yeah, I see. And then you see he's here. He's just totally off balance. He loses his hands are outside. Doesn't get his hands inside. And Matt BK just pushes him right into the quarterback. So, I mean, he's not consistent there. But it is something that you, you know, pass protection is a little bit of liability, but he's not terrible. Even if his PFF grade is still like 68 there. So it's not crazy bad. We'll take that. We'll take that. All right. So now here's my wishful thinking. T Higgins here. Um, you know, this is just me being, this is my greedy free agent breakdown here, guys. So we're going to watch the T Higgins here. And we're basically just see if he could be a number one. Let's just basically let's decide that. So here he doesn't get a lot. Of, he's not getting a lot of targets here. Cause you know, Jamar Chase gets most of the targets. Um, on this team, but you see here him one on one is off coverage. You see the, how he just sets up this route. He's just wide open. If he was going to get the ball, let's watch one more time. All right, 
All right. Uh, let's go to this next right here. Now, now this one, this is against kind of against press coverage. He just throws this guy to the <laughs> ground. I just think it's, it's just funny how he just throws this guy to the floor. So, so, so he. He has an inside stem on the release, and he just finds his way outside. That's why pushing him. He's still within five yards. Just pushes him right there. And this just shows how physical he is in yeah. his route running, right? Um, but he's not getting the ball. He's wide open. All right, so here we go. Another one uh, versus press coverage. This is him setting up a kind of a – really sets up the, the outside route like he's running a fade. And then comes back inside on the on the under route. Broke is out of the pocket. He's able to find him with all the separation he created. And he uses those 20 inch oh, 50 inch arms, whatever they are. <laughs> he's in the end zone. All right. So here, here are some actual targets to him, too, as well. So I really like this one. Watch him switch up speeds and then kind of you can kind of see there's a he's not the cleanest out of his break because of his his size. But uh -huh. he does a great job of setting up his routes here. So here's another one setting up the route. Get in there. Uh make it a play. <clears throat> All right, watch it one more time here. Just set it up. Uh speed. And always coming back to the football. So I really like about T Higgins. He always comes back to the football. All right, here's another one here. I like this one because he, he gets in the uh the cornerback's blind spot and then Comes out of his break, and then you kind of can see a little bit, just a little bit stiff out of it, but he's able to come back to the football and catch all hands. It's a good job using his body too to like shield off the defender. That's one thing I think he's really good at. Is like he's all and he's always been really good at. It's like knowing body positioning and how to manipulate himself to be more open than he actually is. And he has some yak ability too, uh, yak. So he has that to his game as well. Move. Yeah, nice move there, right there, man. I just tell you, like I said, they, he could be a seven million dollar cap hit. <laughs> 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 All right, and then you know, like I said, here's more yak making a man miss in open field, getting down, and then of course, what we all really came to see was him mossing people. Which is the best thing he does. Now this was passing interference a little bit, but it's, you, you just see how physical the ball's in the air. It's T Higgins' ball, right? Yeah. Um, kind of just, just rolls, just throws him to the ground. That's, uh, that's how you do it, right there, right? And then of course there's there's this, there's this ridiculous one. This one's just nuts. <laughs> it's the Vikings end the game here. G Brown just throws it up to him. Jake Browning with the terrible underthrow. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely uh, showing his uh, limitations here, Jake Browning. Yeah. But just, I guess he is on the run. But yeah, just give him a chance, you know? Yeah. And this crazy play. This place is just nuts, man. It, it looks so much better from this angle, too, here on this one. It's just crazy. I like that. <laughs> it's, it's his ball. The ball's in there. It's T. Higgins. And that's what he brings day one. But, you know, this year he did have some drop problems. So even on this route right here, I still love how he kind of comes back to the football, he, even if it's not the greatest looking route. You know, we saw this with Trey Tucker. And, you know, Trey Tucker didn't come back to the football, ends up getting an interception. He gets a drop here, but he still love how he just comes back to the football all the time, right? He's always helping his quarterback out, boxing the guy out, getting a good position to make sure he catches the football. So yeah, man. Uh, that's uh, Kevin Dotson and T Higgins. Um, like I said, Higgins is just uh, that's a luxury to me. Um, but you know, <laughs> if the Raiders want to do, I wouldn't be mad. You know, yeah. we got Tom Telesco. He likes to spend money on high price free agents. There you go, Tom. There you go. Uh, and then of course Kevin Dotson. I think just that that'd be a good pick. He'd probably be like cheap too. He'd probably be like he, he won't be more than like six million. I don't think. And they can really find a really pretty good guard there. That can come in and be an upgrade over Van Roten, I believe. Um, you know, Van, yeah. I know Van Roten had a good year in pass protection, but he didn't run block very well. And I'm not trusting him being a back to back great pass blocker. I'm not trusting it. Yeah. So I'd rather go with Kevin Dotson, who I know can run block. 
he's had a, a history of being a good run blocker and being more of an average pass pass protection uh, type of player. But I still know he's a good run blocker, though. Yeah, I mean, I'm all in on Dotson though, for sure. I think that he'd be a like you said, he'd be an upgrade over a over Greg Van Roten, who I believe is going to be 35 next year or something like that. So, like you said, on top of him just outperforming what he has done in the past year, like he's at that kind of that magic number age wise where it's hard to expect that he's going to be able to replicate what he did last year, even though I thought he ended up having like a pretty good season or a solid season at least. But yeah, Dotson, I mean, I think he's like 26, 27, played right guard. I know he didn't have a great career in uh, in Pittsburgh to start off his, uh, his time in the NFL, but um, I think that was he even said like it was one of those things where he was so used to playing on the right side, they tried to have him play left and then he couldn't do it, just couldn't, you know, operate with the right foot forward and his left foot back. And some of those guys are just like that with the Raiders needing a right guard. I mean, it makes this, it makes a lot of sense to to bring in a guy like him. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do have to say, I hate to be the one to burst your bubble on, on T. Higgins, but it is tough to give him a big contract when you have a $30 million receiver in Devontae Adams and then another $11 million receiver in uh in uh Jacoby Myers and then a third round pick in uh Trey Tucker. <laughs> but I'm not saying it can't I'm not saying it won't can't not happen. I'm just saying I maybe Tom Telesco he evaluates and he sees, you know, maybe he's like Adams is not can't be pressed like he used to, and he's like, Maybe if I move him inside, I bring in T. Higgins. You know, he hasn't watched he hasn't done a deep dive yet. <laughs> he hasn't done a deep dive yet either, Matt. So it's true. I'm just saying he hasn't he hasn't been there yet. He hasn't really deep dived into the team, have you know, trying to figure out how he feels about it. And maybe he's like, you know what, maybe we need a T. Higgins, you know, to because you want to be able to draft a wide receiver, right? Maybe we could just bring in T. Higgins and then he could beat Devontae Adams replacement over time. So I don't know. I just keep just dreaming. It's, 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 <laughs> I'll put positive thoughts here. So I'll put it on the channel. I can <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? All right, so uh, let's let's get to uh, the defensive guys. We're getting uh, Jalen Johnson and Lynn Jerry. Sneed. I go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started with Sneed. Uh, one of the things that I think you're going to probably notice the most out of him is he's a pretty physical player. I think uh, if you didn't know that already by now, uh, you will by the end of this video for sure. Uh, one of the things, and I, I don't know why, I like starting with uh, corners blowing up screens. Like you can kind of see his instincts a little bit here. And then again, some of that aggressiveness. Like what I like about this rep is when he sees Devontae Smith, I uh, almost said Devontae Adams, motion there, you can see him kind of like back off. Like he kind of knows something's up and uh, start to get ready for the screen. And then two, once he once he recognizes it and sees uh, Jalen Hurts start to throw, quick to trigger. I mean, crashes in so hard, he ends up getting a pass break up on a screen, which – Hard to do. Next one coming against the Bills. A little bit later to see it this time. Uh, can't blame him too much. I mean, looks like he's in man here and uh, got a, didn't get any indicators like the last time. So, or no indicators pre-snap, I should say. What I like about this too is one, he fights through Gabe Davis's arm, and two, fights through a block from a tight end that he's given up some size to get creative. And he understands, like you can see it by the spin back outside. That he's got to get in out, outside to force this running or the force this ball carrier to to cut up the field. He doesn't ends up making the play. Granted, a few yards but uh, still gets the first down, but do love to see the aggressiveness on, on that one. Um, this one going back to a little bit more traditional coverage. Gonna be up at the top here. Chiefs are gonna run. I believe looks like a little fire zone. And what I like about this is we're gonna see kind of the football IQ. Passes that off, and then two, like with him playing in the zone, goes to go help this, uh, help out the safety, kind of retraces and takes that options away from Hertz, so that he sets up a, a fourth down. Right, like he's going to let this linebacker go get Hertz on the scramble, and we'll take third and uh, whatever third and medium or third and short or third and long, whatever that ended up being. Um, this one, what we got? Ooh, this one's going to be a nice little interception for you. So the other thing you'll notice about Sneed is he's really comfortable playing from a trail position. Like on this rep, he's going to walk up to the line of scrimmage and then work to get outside leverage. You see A.J. Brown kind of throw his hand up right there, thinking he's open. Now, granted, it hurts under throws this. But in reality, and we'll see this a few other times too, this is probably the worst rep for Sneed as far as like separation. Like 
Snead is comfortable in this spot right here. Like you can see, he's got his eyes on on Hertz, and because of that, he knows what's coming with the route too. And he's able to undercut that route and then go get that pick. And two. Once we get to this next one, also going up against AJ Brown here at the top of the screen. Again, going to get into this trail position, and he loves playing that. That like he is very good at making the quarterback throw above his head. Like on this rep here too, like. We'll see this. He knows when to when to and to not look for the turn and like look for the ball, like when he's playing in that that trail position too. Like we'll see one where in a few where he'll actually turn and locate, but like right here, kind of just stays locked on him, plays the hands at the catch point once AJ Brown uh you know puts his hands up to go catch the ball and ends up having the strength to force him out of the out of bounds and force an incompletion. This one's gonna be against Stefan Diggs here at the bottom of the screen. Similar rep to the one we just saw. Again, gets in that hip pocket. This time looks and turns and locates and ends up getting a PBU again. I mean, this is basically like a lot of his tape. Like this entire, really you'll see is like teams try to test him on go routes. He's one, got the speed, runs sub 4-4. Four, 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 and two, like he's very comfortable. That's where he wants to be. A little OPI if you ask me uh, on digs here with that little hook at the end. But again, another nice rep from him. And uh, going to be playing a lot of airtight coverage versus um, versus those deep routes. This one going to be against Gabe Davis, who was the uh, Bills' deep threat here. And again, like two things that stand out are his route recognition. Like Gabe Davis is going to run a little uh, out and up here with the inside release. But if you notice right here at the uh, at the top of the route. Like Sneed doesn't fall for it and just kind of stays on his vertical path. Yeah, stays on top of the route. And then two, like what I like too is he knows how to use the sideline as his friend. Like right here, he's going to start forcing Davis wide and keep forcing him, get a little physical with them, disrupt that timing, and make it so that uh, Allen has like a tiny window to throw that ball. Again, that's kind of where I'm getting at, where uh, where he's extremely good in that from that trail position. This one a little bit different rep. But again, you can see that route recognition where, like, he basically runs this route for Stephon Diggs right here. Like, as soon as Diggs breaks, he breaks with him. And then, two, he plays to the back of the receiver perfectly to go get another PBU, another one of his strengths. So a lot of impressive ball skills, a lot of uh, impressive stuff in man coverage. Can play zone, too, so definitely an intriguing corner. Like, get a little bit of view of that fair from the end zone view. All right, moving on to Jalen Johnson. Like I said, for some reason, I like starting out these videos with corners blowing up screens. <laughs> but uh, not quite as physical as uh, as Snead is, but he can still get the job done, too. And we're going to see it on this one. Again, reads the screen, gets physical. It's a great job taking on the block with his hands. Like This was like linebacker stuff to me where I'm like, I was getting a little excited here. Like You'll mm -hmm. see right up here, he picks up his hands. And that's perfect. Whoa. Obviously, it's a wide receiver, but that's that's linebacker uh, block destruction stuff right there. All right, another one against here against the uh, against the Vikings again. Jordan Addison, no chance. Takes on the block with his hands. Like you're not going to see that from a lot of a lot of corners. I was kind of surprised to see that from him. It's not a, a traditional trait when taking on blocks. One, because I usually don't like to do it, and two, oh. not quite strong enough. But he can do it at 195, whatever he's weighing uh, weighing these days. All right, so this one, I, another one that kind of uh, highlights his football IQ. Chiefs get a little tricky here. We're going to run the uh, little throwback put, pass here. And what I like, too, not fooled by it, recognizes the, the release of the receiver. It went f too far back. Recognizes the release, release of the receiver. Stays deep in his zone, looking for help, looking for ways he can help out. Finally comes and goes to help out his teammate, make a nice physical tackle on this tight end here. We'll see another clip similar to that in just a second. Again, smart football play, not fooled by the trick play, and ends up forcing the ends up making the tackle short of the sticks. Similar rep here. Believe they're going to be in cover two. Sees that receiver go in, passes him off, goes and goes help his teammates. And that's CJ Ham, who is 250. And uh, like I said, Johnson, I think they list him at like 195, 200 pounds. So you're giving up about 50 pounds to that dude. I mean, that's a perfect, nice nice and physical tackle going low. Know how you're built. Again, love the football IQ and uh, wherewithal to pass off and go pick up pick up his teammates and help out. 
Ah, I went too far back. All right. All right. Here, we're going to see him in coverage in the slot this time. He didn't, didn't take a ton of, uh, of reps in the slot, but for whatever reason against the Chiefs, they had him lined up here. Um, going against Sky Moore, who I know isn't the greatest receiver out there. But again, we'll see him kind of – we'll see a little bit of his movement skills, his change of direction to, you know, be able to stay in phase on that route and we'll get a better view of, uh, of it from the end zone angle of how close he was. I think he actually ends up getting a piece of this. Let's see, right – here, I mean, times that up pretty well to go get another PBU. Another guy with impressive ball skills. And a two, back this up to the sideline copy. What I like that he does also is like he kind of maintains his leverage a little bit by uh, initially by first starting outside and going uh, inside at um, post snap to give a to give Sky Moore a little bit of a different look, and then again still has the change of direction to, to get back to where he needs to be. He's a monster. Yeah. Had a hell of a season, man. PFS highest rated corner this year. So uh -oh. for whatever that's worth. All right. So a little bit different situation here. I think believe this is second and long. Gonna be playing off coverage. Uh the Chiefs are gonna try and throw a short curl route, which obviously if you're playing off, you'll give that up. I mean, again, ball's not even there. He's already driving on the route, pretty much triggered as soon as Patrick Mahomes rear back to throw. And his timing is perfect to get there right as the ball, uh, right as the ball does hit, make contact with the receiver, right as the ball gets there. And two, you can miss it if you're not paying too close of attention, but watch after the catch. Not only does he come up and make a great tackle, but he also is playing the hands and ends up getting a PBU here. The ball just kind of pokes out. You let's try and slow it down so you can see it. Let's see. Right there at the end there, ended up ripping it out and, and turning what should have been third and short into third and long situation. Those are the plays that, uh, you know, you know he's doing his job if he makes his, the tackle there, but uh, obviously turns it into an A-plus play by um, tacking on the, uh, the PBU to, to prevent the completion. All right, so I'll be honest. We've seen these uh, – <coughs> excuse me. If you uh, watched our Vikings preview, you've seen these next two clips before, but – they were too damn good to, to not include. Um, similar rep as we just saw in the last one, playing off, going to get a curl from TJ Hawkinson. And, I mean, Dobbs just stares it down. Great job of reading the eyes and then driving on the throw once Dobbs uh, triggers. Like, quick to click and close. Uh -huh. Now, we got to finish that one, though, because that wow. is six. <laughs> that is six if he picks that. Seriously. I love too. I got to back this up. I love the reaction too. Like you can tell he knew it, and he knew <laughs> whenever they were watching this on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday because it's Monday night game. He was going to catch some shit for this in the in the DV room. Like oh, spikes the ball. Yeah, he's pissed off this one. All yeah. right. So before we watch this last clip, I just want to say this is only something you can get away with if you are an elite corner because this is one of the most impressive interceptions I've seen this season from. Uh, from what I've been watching, uh, this is special. <laughs> like, I'm just gonna let it. I'm just gonna let it run for the first time. <laughs> it's, it's honestly, it, it's... like to break this down a little bit. The Bears are running. They're rolling to cover two post snap, right? So he's responsible for the flat right. He drives on this short in route to bait uh, Josh Dobbs into throwing this corner, which is a exactly what you want right with the smash concept is you want this corner to crash in hill, downhill so he knows that so he's going to pretend to crash on it get Dobbs to throw it and then retrace and not only that but go up and high point it and go make the pick and he also tacks on about 20 yards after the after the pick to or after the catch to make it an even better play all right, so that, that was uh, Jalen Johnson and Legereus Sneed. So, uh, of course, Johnson is a monster, and that is definitely somebody that you know the Raiders need to be after if they don't franchise tag him, which I think the Bears would be crazy if they didn't do that. But you never know. They traded Rokon Smith. so uh, <laughs> That's true. And then signed Tremaine Edmonds to as just as big or maybe even bigger. I don't know. But, yeah, they've done some <laughs> stupid stuff in the past is what we're trying to say. 
So, so maybe they let J- Jalen Johnson go and then give Snead the contract. So, you know, and then maybe we get Jalen Johnson. So uh we'll take it. But either one, you know, us uh, Jalen Johnson, I, I just feel like that, you know, he you could put him in any scheme and he'd be he'll be do really well. I, I just wonder about Snead if Snead's just like a Spagnola guy, even though that Patrick Graham comes from Spagnolo, so that might be a fit there. Cause you know, comes from that kind of that tree, and you know, especially bringing in like Marvin Lewis and Antonio Pierce, who was under Spagnolo too. There's a lot of that Spagnolo in there, what they were doing later on in the year, anyway. So maybe Sneed might be a fit if from that out, outlook of it. So, but Jalen Johnson, that would definitely be a uh, a get that would get Raiders fans excited having him and Jack Jones on both sides. Yeah, having Jack Jones and Sneed on both sides yeah. is exciting too. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think I'm with you. I'm a thousand percent. Jalen Johnson would be my top guy, and probably my top guy in all of free agency. On top of everything we just went over, um, the dudes. I think if he's not 25 now, he turns 25, so he's pretty young still too. I mean, Snead's not old either. I think he's 27 or going to be 27. Um, but still, I mean, Johnson to me. I mean, I think we talked about it a little bit uh, when we're going over the film. Like, was PFF's highest graded corner this past year? Obviously, young, promising, like impressive ball skills can play off and play and press, you know, physical enough to get the job done. Um, not quite as physical as Snead, but Snead can also be um, too physical at times too. But I don't know. I, I think the good thing about Patrick Graham though, is the fact that he doesn't have like a, a true scheme. Like I think he was talking recently about like how he doesn't have like an actual playbook, like he kind of adjusts to his players. So I think that can help out a guy like with Jerry Snead where like, okay, if this guy is better than press man, like, I think Graham's flexible enough to to change it or kind of adapt his, his ways where, you know, he can make the player fit the scheme instead of trying to make the uh, – uh, he can make a scheme fit the player instead of the other way around, make the player try and fit the scheme. So I think that is the positive light. But, I mean, either one of those guys, if they go after him and they become available too because who knows, both of them could get tagged, uh, would be would be top, in, top of my list, hopefully top of uh, Tom Telesco's list too. Yeah, for sure. All right, uh, so that's about it. Uh, any other thoughts? Uh, Jim Harbaugh is the coach of the Chargers, I'm sure. Of, uh, but if he brings – if Greg <laughs> – I can't believe they, that Greg Roman might be his OC. I can't believe he's doing that. If he does that, I, I – just, I, Yeah, wasn't that one of the potential, like, holdups with him and the Chargers is, like, people were not so sold on him wanting to bring in Greg Roman? He must have convinced the Chargers because as soon as he got hired, that rumor came back up that he's supposed yep. to be the – he must have sold him. He must have sold him on Greg Roman. Greg Ro- Roman's changed, maybe, or maybe Herbert's <laughs> running QB counter. You can see here, yeah, Herbert's. That's, that's scary for Herbert coming off a injury. <laughs> <laughs> but some some Raiders fans show me like him doing an organ. I'm not, I'm not saying he can't do it. I know he could, but do you want him to be doing that? Is yeah. the real question, you know? Yeah. But uh, I mean, for as Raiders fans, I'm hoping Greg Roman's OC. So. Problem is, it sounds like Vic Fangio. Now that Fangio's gone uh, in Miami, he's probably going to Chargers. I'd imagine. No, he, he, he already signed with Philly. I guess he already like. Oh, was, he did. It was like an. It, I felt like it was more of a trade. I feel like they traded. Oh, him. weird. <laughs> yeah, he's going to Philly. Yeah, he's supposed to sign with Philly. Yeah, he's supposed to sign with Philly like right away. So it's it's not that. I think he's going to bring Jesse Minter with him, but um, oh, uh, from Michigan. Mm-hmm. That's weird because Philly just moved on from Sean Desai, who was a Fangio disciple, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Why bring the disciple? Bring the master. You know yeah, what I mean? Get, like, yeah. <laughs> Why sell for a disciple when you can get Jesus Christ? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. The and, Jesus and the, Christ of of uh, cover four, <laughs> of match quarters, cover six, right? Match quarters, match yeah. man. Yeah, uh, and then. Uh, the, the, the Dolphins guys are pissed because I, when I watch Hard Knocks, man, they loved Fangio. Those guys loved him on defense. They're, they, they had this dinner once and they talk about how great his defense it is. And you're like, yeah, man, it, it takes you a while to get it, but now, man, we're balling. And Javon Holland was kicking rocks today after that had announced. Ah, uh, see, I thought that was a. Uh, when I first saw it, I interpreted that as like he was like happy, like uh, telling Fangio to kick rock. That's wild. I didn't realize that was that was a. Uh, in support of Fangio. That's why they move on from him. I don't know, bro. They played really good defense at the end of the year. I mean, they didn't have Jalen Phillips, Bradley Chubb, Xavier Howard. <laughs> they didn't have anybody. They were all hurt at the end of the year. I mean, even the backup defensive end was hurt. The uh uh Van Yeah, Ginkle. Van Ginkle. He was hurt too. Yeah, they were signing dudes <laughs> off the street. 
<laughs> That's why I was like, people are like, move on from Tua. I'm like, well, damn, I don't know if Tua had Chubb and <laughs> Phillips and Van Ginkle. Maybe he's in yeah. that game. Maybe. Um, but yeah. All right. Um, yeah, but we're out of here. Enough of that. We'll talk about this later, you know, this weekend, do some more Senior Bowl stuff. We'll be at the Senior Bowl next week. Um, so we're good to go. Uh, hit the subscribe button, guys. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We're out of here. Peace. See ya.